You're still watching the Minister's Platform, a program that, of course, gives a voice to the federal ministries of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And today we're going to be looking at a very strategic federal ministry that, of course, is saddled with the responsibility of internal security in Nigeria. And so it's our pleasure to welcome the Minister of Interior, or Benny Rauf Aregbeshola, who is going to be telling us about the major significant achievements of his ministry. We're here to also verify and ascertain the level of efforts and initiatives the ministry, under the able leadership of the minister, has taken to position the Ministry of Interior. You're welcome, sir, to Thank the you. program. Thank you for the opportunity of um, engaging with Nigerians. It's a pleasure, sir. What is the internal security master plan and policy direction of the ministry for the much desired transformational change in the country? On assumption of office in August of 2019, we rallied the leadership and the staff of the ministry and the agencies, services that are with us to fully understand the mission of the ministry and its strategic role in protecting Nigerians, ensuring their safety and securing both their lives and property and the territorial integrity of the Nigerian space. So by the end of the sixth month, we organized the first ever ministerial retreat. The theme of the retreat is uh, driving performance in achieving the presidential mandate in Nigeria's internal security. At that retreat, which was the first ever the ministry will ever put together, we mobilized both the ministry and the agencies to because they won't know what their own knowledge of their roles are on the mandate of the ministry, which is safety of Nigerians, internal security, and citizenship integrity. After that, when you to develop strategic plans at achieving the broad objective and the limited defined objective, broken into short, medium, and long term. By the first week of October, we'll be launching documents on strategic master plan for internal security in Nigeria, which is a result of all the efforts we have done uh, in developing an intellectual framework based on interaction, position, and understanding of those of each organs from the main ministry to the Nigeria Immigration Service, Nigerian Correctional Service, Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, and the Fire, Fire Service. So we are sure that uh, the ministry will meet the objective of regarding life and properties of Nigerians, as well as collaborating with other security agencies, particularly the military, safeguarding the territorial integrity of the Federation. There are significant initiatives, uh, programs and efforts of the ministry, especially in the areas of granting of Nigerian citizenship, consular and immigration services, business permits, and expatriate quota since you came into office. We've actually been opportune to read in the print media, some of these very, um, what I call it, uh, gallant efforts. So can you share with us, sir? Nigerians would like to know. We met a not too suitable procedure for the grant of expatriate quota, which we have reviewed. We have developed a new handbook for expatriate quota administration and the grant of business permits. I equally set up a task force I will ensure enforcement of all the regulations and conditions for the grant of expatriate quota. Be your private business, be in government operations. Government believes that if Nigerians cannot do a particular job and expatriates are required to undertake such assignments, in registering and granting the permit for such expatriate work, in Nigeria, for whatever 
operations, then good individual, the owners is on that hiring individual or corporations or firm and even, even government uh, operation or service to ensure that Nigerians, some Nigerians are equally put through the capacity to take over in the expatriate at the end of the quota given. We set up a task force to enforce that. And uh, I'm confident that that task force is working. So, Minister, before you came on board, the uh, Ministry of Interior, there was a systemic failure. This is in regards to effective and efficient administrative management and welfare policy of the Nigerian Correction Services, both for the personnel and inmates. Nigerians would like to know your pragmatic, proactive and improved efforts in the reform and reintegration of inmates. First of all, uh, just before I was in the office, a new law was enacted and approved by both the National Assembly and the President, changing the Nigerian penitentiary system from strictly punitive to a correctional one. Part of the old Nigerian Prison Act, we now have Nigerian Correctional Act of 2019. And uh, I happen to be the first minister to administer that law. The law that people under lock and key and leave them to rot, jail, recommends that uh, our inmates, I mean, uh, the people we handle are not prisoners anymore. They are inmates. They could be convicts or convicted inmates or awaiting trial inmates. Awaiting trial inmates, regrettably, constitute over 70% of those that we have in our custody. Nearly 30% are are convicts. We see them as a people deserving of rehabilitation, people worthy of re reintegration after after their rehabilitation, after their information. We believe they are they are worthy citizens that must go back and play their own role and part in society. The, the our requirement, our role in managing the awaiting trial inmates is simply custody. It is at their own discretion that they can be part of our reformation, rehabilitation efforts. While we are by law compelled to affect the lives of convicts positively, introduce them to life-changing activities and whatever, not have such authority on the awaiting trial inmates. This is very important because people blame us for the errant activities of the awaiting trial inmates who, after a while, are either left off the hook by the judicial system without conviction. However, we, we, within the resources available to us, we are doing our best to ensure that uh, those who are under our care have the best. Four, 456 inmates are doing undergraduate studies. Some are really got in their first degree. Some are doing NC, some are doing OND and whatever. There are thousands going through secondary education process, thousands doing primary education process, and of thousands engaging in crafts and uh, vocational studies. So, uh, and I, again, I want to even, I want to even use this media to call on where many Nigerians to support us, striving to meet the requirements, changing the lives, forming the image, we can never have enough. We need as much as possible support from those who can. And why must you, why must this really be, be, be strident? And why must this strike a chord in our mind is simple. The less of criminals we have, the better for all of us. No, sociologically it's impossible not to have criminals. But if we, if we, if we strive to redeem them, it reduces tension and anxiety in society, and we, we all benefit. To that extent, I want to appeal to where many Nigerians to support the Nigerian Correctional Service in having capacity to be a school block, to be a reading room, to be a provision of books, whatever it is you can do. 
most of these things are really done freely. The Nigerian Open University provides the educational thing, you don't pay anything, but we need reading room to, to even make that possible, conducive reading facility. There, there is no limit to, to the comfort we, we, can, we, we can provide for them to read. Donate the word class reading room or classroom or our inmate will not reject it. As to whether we have support, yes, some individuals support us, but it can never be enough. Nigerians are aware of your proactive and strategic efforts to provide adequate security for the correctional centers across the country. You've done greatly due to the incessant attack. But why was the recent Kuje Correctional Center attack by terrorists, why was it possible? And what efforts is your ministry making to forestall future occurrence? Any attack on any custodial facility is highly regretted, regrettable, and most unfortunate. Why? The custodial facilities are the very end of judicial system or administration of criminal justice system. If the custodial facilities could not hold those that have been convicted by courts of competent authority and jurisdiction, then what is the need to invest so much in the entire administration of criminal justice system from apprehension, prosecution, trial, and conviction of convicts. What is the purpose? If, at the end of the day, they cannot serve their terms. And I, I share the pain and agony of Nigerians in that regard. However, let us, could they consider facility, though a medium security facility, has, is, the, is the most forti fortified facility in Nigeria. A platoon of soldiers who are there before the attack, and they are still there. You have adequate number of um, various classes of police, people from counterterrorism to their elite force of uh, mobile operatives. We must not equally forget that a nation with the challenges we have on security must expect breaches like this. It's painful, but uh, the assurance is this. We are developing a more watertight uh, arrangement that will make it almost impossible for anyone to violate our custodial facilities. I've made it clear, times without number, that the custodial facilities are red zones and that only suicides, those who have cleared their intention to die, will attempt to attack our custodial facilities. All arrangements we made to ensuring that could not work either to, but I want to believe that with the new arrangements we have put in place, whoever attempts to violate our custodial facilities will not live to tell the story.